Hi guys and welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it so very much. Welcome. My name is Aiden. I'm so happy that you're here. This is the second video in my series. I'm going to do some of my favorite notes and my favorite scents with that note that I feel is prominent. Uh, for some of these, I have a lot more than others. Um, there's a couple coming up that I've been planning for and I'm like, oh, that's, that's a lot of scents. Today I have four scents that I feel are really good and then I have kind of an honorable mention that I don't really enjoy but it's something that people might be interested in. Anyway, if you haven't already subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and please leave me a comment. Let me know what some of your favorite watermelon scents are down below and if there are any scents that I should try with a prominent watermelon note, let me know down below. I will say before I start this that uh, Le Imprecise, I just butchered that, my mouth just went bleh. Um, I know a lot of people really like that. I don't really like that. I get a really sharp, like this rhubarb and kiwi is just too much for me and that I don't find it as a watermelon scent at all. I do own that, but it didn't make the cut because I don't feel like it has a prominent enough watermelon note for me. I'm trying to get ones that have a really strong watermelon scent, which is hard. I will admit it's a very hard scent note to uh, replicate because it's such a light note. Uh, if you have other fragrances or other scent notes that you think I should do, leave them down below and I will add them to my list. Uh, I'm tr hoping to get one of these out every week or every other week, kind of talking to my collection and seeing what I have and what scent notes are prominent. We're gonna start with the honorable mention. This is not one that I really enjoy. This is Shea and Blue Watermelons, and I was so looking forward to this because it says watermelons. That's what the name of it is. And this is the newer packaging. I don't like their newer packaging as much, like their little, I don't know if you can tell, but it's not circular anymore. It's It does not fit on there very well, which is annoying. Anyway, let's give this a spray. When I sprayed this on my skin the other night, I was like, this uh, does not sit too well on my skin and it doesn't stay sweet. I would expect a watermelon scent to have a certain sweetness to it because watermelon does have a sweetness to it. And it smells okay on initial spray it, it doesn't really knock your socks off with a watermelon scent or anything. There's like a muskiness and a greenness to it. So the notes on this are watermelon and green mandarin. Middle notes are green leaves, green tea, and honeysuckle. And base note is vetiver. And I think I almost get like there's a musk to it. And the musk just didn't sit right on my skin. And it does get more and more green as it sits. Um, maybe it's the green tea. I don't know. I don't... The other green teas since I've had, I've enjoyed, but I think if you like a green type of a scent, green musky, and you want a watermelon scent, this would be okay, but this is not a favorite of mine. This is not one that I recommend, and this might end up being on my chopping block. It, it's not yet, because I'm working slowly through my collection, but it, it's not a love for sure. This next one is an indie house brand. It's just a little one. Uh, this is Gear Ness Layla, and this is the essence of Norway. And he does have a, a men's scent. I don't remember what it's called, but he also did Frozen for Disney. And uh, I actually got this in Disney World. It was sold in the Norwegian Pavilion and was there when he was there. So my bottle is autographed, which I think is pretty cool. And if I remember right, I'm looking at Fragrantica and they're, they're not listing anything. I think this had dewberry in it, I wanna say. It definitely has a watermelon note and some uh, local Norwegian flowers in as well. This is light. It is airy. It feels cooling. It has like a coolness to it. Not like cool, but like it not so much an iciness, but you know, like Norway, you think of it being a cooler climate um, and you get that from this. The watermelon kind of comes and goes, but I feel like that sweetness that it has is definitely, you can get a little bit of that watermelon and that's what you're getting from it. It's refreshing. It does have some florals in it. So if you 
are not a floral fan, I would not recommend this one, but I think it's worth a try. I have seen this at Nordstrom's, uh, so they might have it at a Nordstrom if you have a Nordstrom near you. I don't normally, so I, I think this one is so nice, and it doesn't, even though it's not super watermelony, it does have a watermelon quality to it, but it's, um, it doesn't have that green uh, muskiness that watermelons does. I feel like this has more of a prominent watermelon note than watermelons does. But yes, I really love this one and I would highly recommend it. This one is discontinued, unfortunately. Um, it is from Zara. Zara, Zara is hard to keep up with. Anyway, this is cherry watermelon ice. I don't know why I have like little floaties in there and that kind of disturbs me. It's not like I can open the bottle, but um, cherry watermelon ice. This is part of the Joe Loves collection that they did, the Zara Emotions. This was like the junior collection and I love the junior collection. She did this one and hip hop candy apple or something like that. And then uh, rose marshmallow candy and oh, that one is delicious too. This one, I get the cherry, but I also get like that almost like the watermelon rind is more of what I get with this one. And maybe that's the ice uh, about the ice bit of it. They do not have any notes listed on Fragrantica. Well, they do, but I do not agree with what they, they say cardamom and green leaves. And I'm, that is not what I get because this definitely does have a cherry, a very slight uh, tart cherry, not a juicy cherry whatsoever. But this one is so nice. I really like if you like if you want that rind mixed in with a little bit of the sweetness of the real watermelon, like the edible part of the watermelon, I guess I should say. That's what this one gives you. So that is Cherry Watermelon Ice by Zara. I'm sure it's hard to get at this point because Zara fragrances can be insane priced. All right, next up we have We from Juicy Couture. This is the first one they've done two flankers now and then like the we please like the little ones a whole bunch of those did i even i don't think i actually sprayed the strip i did um this one is probably the most this has a sharpness to it but like a fruity sharpness from a citrus and you definitely do get the watermelon in there it's not quite as prominent as in the last one that I just talked about, but you can still get the watermelon in there. Our notes on this, our top notes are watermelon, pear, tea, and acai berry. Middle notes are honeysuckle, jasmine, and tuberose. Base notes are musk, woodsy notes, and amber. After that initial like sharpness, it settles down and you're left with a perfumey watermelon, if that makes sense. Um, it's a little it's not green or florally like like the first one I said was a green musky I said Layla was more of a like florally perfume this has a little bit more depth to it it feels a little denser I almost want to say this one could be kind of unisex which I don't usually say especially like this is a, this is a girly bottle um, but those base notes really are adding something to it so you have that like light refreshing bit from the watermelon but then you also have those base notes it's probably the amber that's causing it to feel a little heavier it's so nice i really enjoy this one i need to wear this one more i don't reach for this one super much because uh viva la juicy still has my heart that's still one of my favorites but this is a good one i do i usually only reach for it in the summer but i think this would uh, be a good spring scent and could even carry you a bit into fall and like I said I think it could it could lean more unisex um, definitely more so than my last fragrance so the last fragrance I want to talk about today is Escada Sorbeto Rosso and yes it does have the pineapple on it it tells you what to, to expect just like uh, Miami Blossom does with the uh, pineapples on it this one's a little more hard to find than um, some of the other ones. This one came out in 2018, so came out the year before Miami Blossom, which I have found some of those. This one, I feel like I got a pretty decent price on this one. Definitely not retail, but it is probably getting harder to find. 
and I think people have talked about it, so that's there's that too. So our notes on this are top notes of pear, cologne, uh, and tangerine. Middle notes are watermelon, watery notes, strawberry, apple, sea salt, tiara flower, hedonine, and rose. Base notes are praline, musk, and amber. Um, cologne, C-A-L-O-N-E. That looks like it's a molecule fragrance note. This is definitely the sweetest of all of these fragrances. It's the most candied like. It's, you have that watermelon, but it almost feels like, it's not quite a candied watermelon scent, but it doesn't smell like an authentic watermelon, if that makes sense either. Like it definitely doesn't scream like, oh, this is a watermelon type of a scent. It's a little bit of like, I have some watermelon, but I have watermelon candy and I tried to mix them together with throwing in some other elements, which I think like you get some of that pear in there as well. The pear, uh, pear blends well because it's not overwhelming, but it's a little uh, water. It's like a watery pear, not so much like there's a dry pear, I feel too. We're going to talk about pears eventually and you'll hear all my thoughts on pears. It's so nice. It is really light, really sweet. It's a, definitely a summer scent. I don't think I would wear this in the fall or in the winter. Even in the spring, it might be a little too much. I want something not quite as prominent. I feel like this has a presence to it. So in terms of watermelon, what I feel has the most watermelon to what I feel has the least watermelon, or switch that strike that reverse. Um, so the least amount of watermelon, I'm going to go with Layla. I feel like it does have it. It's, it's in there, but there are the florals, which are a little bit more prominent with that. So we'll put Layla in last place. Then I'm going to put watermelons. I feel like there's a little bit of watermelon and, but it's overwhelmed by all of the other notes very, very quickly. So it, it's, it was a disappointing fragrance to me just it was it was not I was not a fan then we're gonna go with we by juicy couture it has that watermelon in it but it has all those other notes playing in it and it kind of grounds it as well so it doesn't feel quite as watermelony as the top two which in second place I'm going to put Escada Sorbeto Rosso um, I feel like if you want an authentic more like natural watermelon scent this is not it this is, uh, has a slightly more candied watermelon scent to it but it has elements of that but this one this has that very prominent rind uh watermelon rind mix, mixed with some of the watermelon in there and cherry watermelon ice if you've tried these i would love to know your thoughts on these scents let me know if there are other scents that you think i should try that have watermelon or others in the comments i hope you're all having a fantastic day thank you so much for stopping by and i can't wait to talk to you next time